If you don't go, you'll never know. Hello, Wonder Hussy here, camping at a place called Thelma and Louise Road. Now, why is it called Thelma and Louise Road? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, you know I wouldn't drive off the edge of a cliff like that, but hey, that's the reason this is called Thelma and Louise Road, because there's a little power line road that runs straight to the brink of this dramatic desert canyon. This is actually the Amargosa River. Okay, the Amargosa River starts out in Beatty, Nevada. It's got its headwaters in Beatty, and it kind of flows in a like a J shape. It goes down south and then curves around here through uh, the Tacopa Valley and Shoshone. And then it actually terminates in the Badwater Basin in Death Valley, which is the lowest point in the Western Hemisphere. You've probably seen that on the TV. But anyway, this part of the Amargosa is where it winds through this beautiful canyon. And this is actually, well, this is actually one of my favorite places to camp. You can see I'm uh, here with my sister. We both got our rigs backed right up to the edge because, well, we like to live dangerously. You can see we, uh, well, we just pulled in. Oh, we came down the power line road. Instead of uh, going straight off into the canyon, we hung a left and, well, I guess it would have been a right. And we came over here. There's a bunch of different campsites. There's a little firing there, you can see. And if you continue along the edge of the canyon, there's more campsites up that way too. And well, if you have a fear of heights, well, you probably already quit watching this video, but if you are still watching and you have a fear of heights, well, you probably wouldn't want to camp here. But why I like camping here? Well, it's right outside Tacopa, the little hot spring town of Tacopa. But what's unique about this campsite, in my experience is, there's cell reception here, okay? Normally you can't get a signal anywhere in Tacopa, but for some reason up here, on this canyon, I get pretty good Verizon 4G. So it's only about five miles from Tacopa. To me, it's worth driving the extra five miles to have cell signal. Okay, so like I said, when we drove down Thelma and Louise Road, and we got to the edge of the canyon there, we took a right and went over and camped over there. But if you take a left, there's actually another really cool campsite over here. It's an old foundation of someone's house. And what I think is interesting about it is someone has gone through the time and trouble of posting some history about what this was. It was the home of this guy, Peter Jacobson. I guess he had a mine across Furnace Creek Road. The mine was called the Poet Laureate of the Mojave Desert. <laughs> wow, what a name for a mine. I like this guy. Uh, he had a simple house, an assay office, and some water storage tanks a shallow well to capture water from springs up the canyon and then he pumped water up over this canyon wall so somehow there must be a spring down there that he pumped the water up here to his house it says he lived here with his wife hazel and two daughters hazel was the first preacher of the uh, tacopa community church and peter was known as a god-fearing man who was always trying to get the kids of tacopa to go to church <laughs> He left the area in the early 1990s and then the BLM cleared the property soon after. So it's cool that somebody went through the trouble to actually put the history of the person who lived here. I think that's really neat because, you know, I'm always exploring these abandoned places and wondering about, oh gee, I wonder who lived there and making up these wild stories. Well, this is one of the cases when I can actually know who lived here. So I found that sign really interesting talking about, well, a couple of things. First, talking about pumping water up from this canyon and secondly, this mine, because you know, I've camped here a few times and well, there's two things I always notice. One, you can see there's some scarring from an old mine across the canyon there. And two, well, it's very lush down at the bottom of this canyon. You can see there's even like those palm trees there. I'll bet you anything, there's a spring right there and that's where he pumped his water up from. So like I said, I've camped here a number of times and we always sit around camp looking at the view, wondering like, 
oh, I wonder what's down in that canyon, and hmm, I wonder what's over there at that abandoned mine. Anyway, wondering about all that kind of stuff sure is a lot of fun, but it's no substitute for going down and finding out for yourself. And so that's just what my sister and I are going to do today. We're going to hike down into the bottom of this canyon and see for ourselves what kind of interesting mysteries it holds. Now we figured out there is a trail to hike down. There's kind of like a little wash on the other side of where we're camped. But rather than just hike down, hike around and hike back up, we're gonna drive my car down the road. There's a point where the road actually goes to the bottom of the canyon. And then from there, we're just gonna walk along the bottom of the canyon until we get to that little trail in the wash going back up to where my sister's car is. And then she'll drive me back to get my car. That's the plan, let's go. Holy cannoli. Okay, so we drove down across the Amargosa River and up the other side of the canyon to investigate this old abandoned mine. I'm guessing it was a talc mine because there's all this white everywhere. A, and B, the name of the road we were driving on was Smith Talc Road. <laughs> Pretty big clue. It's just concrete, foundations, piles of tailings, metal detritus. And then there is this, well, I don't know if this is like a shaft or an attic. Oh, yikes. There's like still timbers in there. And it looks like if you were inclined, you could probably climb right down in there and poke around. Uh, unfortunately, I am not inclined, nor am I appropriately attired or provisioned. I don't have a hard hat or a headlamp. But yeah, essentially it's just another abandoned mine. Another place where man has gone in gouged what he could from the earth and then just left everything a huge toxic mess in his wake and i have nothing against mining i've said this many times wouldn't be able to be shooting this video on a cell phone and using a drone and a gopro and all these things without the minerals that we get out of the earth but i do take issue with the way they just leave these giant messes behind and it doesn't seem like there's much oversight to make them clean up after themselves. Okay, before we head on and start our hike through the canyon, <sighs> I did notice some interesting graffiti here. <laughs> Look at this. Beware gangbangers, Death Valley Knights, DVK. <laughs> okay, I've never heard of the DVK, but just guessing from personal experience and clues from context, I'm gonna say these people are tired of their precious historic mine sites being vandalized by big city gangbangers that drive all the way out here into the middle of nowhere to write their gang graffiti. And while by gum, this Death Valley Knights group, probably a group of patriots, local patriots that wanna preserve our mining heritage and keep it gangbanger free, well, they came out and wrote their own graffiti to discourage any further graffiti. Makes perfect sense to me. Okay, let's get back in the car and continue on to the bottom of the Amargosa River Canyon where our hike back to camp will begin. Okay, we drove to the lowest point of the road where it crosses the Amargosa River. Should be a nice hike along the bottom of this beautiful canyon. And we're going to start it out. This is where I'm parking my car. It's actually the original town site of Tacopa. I didn't realize this, Tacopa Hot Springs and the town of Tacopa nowadays isn't the original town site. The original town of Tacopa was right here. Look at this, this 160 acre parcel is the site of the original mining town of Tacopa, which was founded in 1878. This property now belongs to the Amargosa Conservancy, which is a nonprofit land trust. But this right down here in the, I guess right on the Amargosa River is where the original Tacopa town site was. And well, what's really kind of sad <laughs> is you can see by this other sign here, the area beyond the sign was used historically as a settling basin for liquids used in silver and lead milling operations. The soil contains unsafe levels of several heavy metals and other substances that could pose a health hazard. Please stay out of this basin for your safety and that of others. So basically, I wonder if that has anything to do with why they moved the town site. Uh, <laughs> essentially, they mined a bunch of stuff out of the mountains and processed it all and poisoned their own town. And the whole town had to be jacked up and moved. <laughs> Sounds about right. Anyway, this is where I'm parking, leaving my car here. We're gonna go into this canyon 
and well hopefully we won't have to bushwhack too much because well I'm not exactly wearing appropriate bushwhack attire but it is interesting how lush and green it is down here I mean look there's even a cottonwood tree I mean this was the original Tacopa town site if you could go poking through all these bushes you'd probably find all kinds of old cans and bits and pieces of stuff of the people's lives that lived here it's pretty cool wow this is cool so it's like a little campsite at the beginning of our hike really a cool place to camp nice flat area fire pit somebody even laid in some firewood well it looks like that was a shade tree at one time and then look over here oh it's a dog's grave frank our best friend lived from 2006 oh he just died in february 21 oh look at oh no look his little tennis ball that he used to chase oh that is so sweet i guess maybe it's oh maybe it's somebody who lives in tacopa that used to come out here and hike with their dog r.i.p frank good boy oh look and then right here by the campsite it says noonday california i guess that's the name of this area i think there is a noonday mine that i've heard of that must be Oh god, no telling, somewhere in the area. But anyway, this is the hike we're facing ahead of us here. Oh gosh, we barely started and the trail is already so densely choked with brush. I don't think we're going to really be able to penetrate this. Okay, well, we had to change our plans. Uh, neither one of us really feels like bushwhacking like that. Yes, I do have a machete with me and yeah, you know, I could put on more clothes, but instead we decided what we'll do is we'll, we're just going to drive back to our camp and hike down into the canyon from camp all right round two <laughs> i'm just gonna park where i was this morning and we're gonna go ahead and hike on down into the canyon from right here i remember seeing a trailhead someone has lined up these rocks here and that indicates the start of the trail down into the canyon so we're just gonna follow this and yes i know it looks like we're about to dive off the edge of the earth but you can see my sis down there making her way along there's actually a trail and it's not that bad okay so you can see the trail is actually fairly well defined and look oh look down there in the wash there's a uh, some old ruins this must be where that guy was pumping his water from oh i can't wait to crawl into that crack wow far out we made it well sort of to the bottom of the canyon not the true bottom but we made it to where this old like somebody's house or homestead was look at this wow what a place for a homestead oh my goodness oh maybe that's the water tank that you're talking about where the guy pumped his water out of i don't know oh my goodness where's my sister going what's in there <laughs> oh wow look at this old fireplace oh there's just so much to look at here okay this looks like it was well probably just storage maybe like a root cellar type thing oh no look <laughs> this is where they kept all their tools they drew uh where the scissors used to hang the uh lock washers washers nuts radio washing machine etc bolts how cute oh so it was just kind of like a tool shed dug into the side of the cliff and then look there's I feel like, isn't that something to do for flies when people bolt those or nail those mason jar lids to the ceiling? Or I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Weird. What a mystery. Oh, and then what are these? Like, isn't that some kind of electrical thing? Like maybe he had light bulbs in here? Weird. It's a wire going from nowhere to nowhere. And then what's that for? Is that something to keep flies away really? Aw, some little miner lived down here. And like his little ladder is to get up from this level to the next level. How cute! Wow, this was some place. Oh, dang, look. <laughs> Crash helmet. Oh, holy moly, here's where his bathroom was. Ah! <laughs> Stop it! Look, the bathtub is still there. And the soap dishes. Now, I was going to say, why do you have so many soap dishes? But I guess this is where his sink was. <laughs> You can see where the sink was plumbed in there. He had plumbing and then his and her soap dishes, or maybe that's where he had his uh, thing that you keep your toothbrush in medicine chest. And then of course in the shower bath shower, you had to have a separate soap dish. And that's where this cute little teacup is now. Wouldn't want to take a bath in that. <laughs> wow. This is actually super interesting. 
And then look at this fireplace. That looks like it was probably pretty cozy. <laughs> Somebody scavenged a frame from his bed and put it up on the mantle. Neato. Wow. To think that all of this was down here. And I had no idea all this time I've been camping right up top there. Just goes to show, if you don't go, you'll never know. Such a neat old home site. Loved this. Okay, but now we still want to continue down because we're not even at the bottom of the canyon yet where the actual river... I don't even think the river flows above ground at this part of the canyon, but you can see if we were to go that way, which that's towards the China Ranch date farm and then onwards to Tacopa, it looks like it's just completely choked with trees that way. Uh, well, maybe you could get around it on the right. I don't know. We want to go the other way, though, because we're both very curious to go inside that slot canyon. Oh, wow. What's this? An old car? Oh, my gosh. What is that? Like an old buckboard? Or is that an old car? That looks super freaking old. I mean, it's got a steering wheel. It has a steering wheel. I mean, it was obviously an automobile, but it looks like a super old one. Because look, it's like a part made out of wood. Oh, my God. Ah! Okay, somebody watching this video will be able to tell just by looking at this chassis. What's that? Oh, God. There's like this weird vent on the front. Or is that the back? No, it's the front. Maybe that's where the... the oh, lights come. I don't know. Wow, this is so old. Anyone has any ideas what that was, let us know in the comments. Oh, wow, look, here's the canyon. Holy moly, I feel like Indiana Jones. It's like going into a sacred cathedral. Oh, thank you. That must be the reason we were called to hike this canyon, to clear it of mylar. Okay, well, the canyon eventually just kind of got to a point where you couldn't go any farther without seriously having to clamber. And, well, there's other stuff in the river canyon itself that we want to check out. So let's, well, venture back into this dense thicket of mesquite trees. Also a good time to note that there's our campsite way up top there. See where that power line is that's the end of the road where I pretended like I was gonna drive off. All this stuff was hiding just below us. Look, it's like a some kind of gourd or squash. I've seen these out in the desert. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's heavy. It's a good size to it. Wow, it's like a vine growing. Oh yeah, look, growing all over this dead tree. What an interesting ecosystem down here. And what's, what's more, we're finding a lot of garbage around here. Like somebody has thrown these off-roading road signs down here, a couple of those, beer cans, some kind of compressed air. Unfortunately, just reinforcing all those negative stereotypes that people have of off-roaders. Oh, look, my sister just uncovered a bunch more. There's several of those off-road trail signs down here. And to be fair, uh, it might not necessarily be the work of off-roaders. That might be the work of anti-off-roaders because I understand that this whole area is sort of like fairly recently become open to OHVs, off-highway vehicles, you know, side-by-sides and quads. And I guess they're trying to encourage people to come out here and ride these desert trails so that they'll visit the local businesses and buy food and beer and stuff. But then there's some locals who live here that really don't like those machines driving around tearing up the desert. And so I did hear that some of the locals were going around and ripping up the off-road trail signs. So that could be the work of locals. But the compressed air in the beer cans, I'm pretty sure that was off-roaders. All right, so uh, we tried going to the right coming out of the slot canyon and unfortunately, too much brush, couldn't get to the spring. Now we're gonna try going to the left. Okay, wow, this direction is way better. Uh, the canyon opened up considerably. Golly, now it's so wide open. We're like, huh, maybe we could walk all the way to the China Ranch date farm and get a delicious date shake. 
oh wow look hiking along we found some more vines uh, uh do you think this is the same thing yeah i guess it is because look there's a green one but i guess when they get ripe they turn bright yellow look at that and then the flowers are beautiful oh that's a different plant Oh, that's jimson weed. Oh, that's what the Native Americans would uh, take to hallucinate. Far out. Look at this. These are neat. Look, here's one that's kind of old and. Wow, I'm bash. Oh. Right. What's inside it? Oh yeah, see, it's I. It's just like a little pumpkin. I know it is. Wow, look at those seeds. Whew. Well, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna be able to walk all the way to the date ranch. I just looked at my map, and we're about halfway there. But the problem with that is once we get there, we have to get back and we don't have that much time or energy. So for now, we're just gonna hike back and then hike back up to our camp. Okay, we made it all the way back up to that abandoned homestead. We're facing the final ascent there, back up to the top of the canyon. But we stopped here for a minute and I noticed that the name of this place is actually written in the cement there. Look, Cannon Ranch from 1936. Wow, I believe it. This does look like it was pretty old but oh my goodness how cool man I'm tired we've already walked about five miles all together I have one more to go and it's straight uphill I better lay on this bed and take a quick break <laughs> ah adventure that was and now I know I have to come back and do the hike from here to the date ranch at some point Oopsie. <laughs> well guess what it's the very next day and we decided to go back and do that date ranch hike already another beautiful day the kind of day that I really want a delicious date shake so we just set out uh, just a little bit before noon we're hiking down we left my sister's car at the date ranch so once we get there and enjoy our delicious treat We'll just drive back here and pick up my rig. Okay, well, we've been hiking along for a while now, and I think we're probably getting close to the date ranch. And how I know that isn't because I'm seeing date palm trees. It's because we came upon this huge burned area. Unfortunately, about oh, a month ago, I think, there was a terrible wildfire in this canyon. Well, not a wildfire. It was caused by a human. And I won't really go into the details about it because I don't really know all the information. I think it was... Basically a guy leading a, some kind of eco hiking group and somebody in the group I think set off fireworks, but that's all I'll say about it. Anyway, it started this huge fire that threatened the date ranch property itself. Cause you can see, yeah, there are some date palms, half charred date palms. So we must be getting close. But then I've also heard that there, there's these really big black flies out here called bombers that come out in the summertime. Like once the temperature gets to a certain level, like generally around late May, these giant flies come on, they bite. They, they don't just bite, they basically cut into you. I mean, they're, they're like the size of half my pinky. They're huge, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, but what I've also heard from some locals here is that back in the day that Native Americans used to come in here and burn out all this uh, overgrowth because this is where the bombers would breed. And so they did that as a mitigation means of mitigation to mitigate the bomber problem so i don't know i mean yeah there's good things to fire and there's bad things to fire okay wow now we're definitely approaching the outskirts of the date ranch here's a willow spring uh this used to be totally shaded with green trees and there was a little pier with a like kind of like a palapa hut over it it looks very tropical paradise in the middle of the desert but apparently all that burned down too this whole thing look at that it's just fried wow look at this burned out forest i think these were all mesquite trees it's just really kind of creepy. You can see like the whole hillside up ahead is scarred black from the fire. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're leaving the burned area behind. There was kind of like an option. You could take one path that kind of goes back to the road. We took the other one that said Ranch View Trail. And it kind of leads down this, well, let me show you. Leads down kind of like back in behind these mud hills that surround the date ranch. But this, these mud hills are hiding an amazing secret oasis. Look at this. Here's the river canyon, you can see. This is what we were hiking down. We wouldn't have been able to continue down it though because dun dun dun, look at that. Holy cannoli. That's an, uh, that's like a tropical freaking waterfall. Look how high that is too. I don't know, I'm bad with distances, but I'd estimate that to be like 
50, 70 feet waterfall, and then it gathers in that beautiful little pool down below. Oh my word, look how beautiful that is. That's the Amargosa River, and then it continues flowing down, uh, basically meanders all the way through these mud hills, and then comes out around the corner by the date ranch. Wow, this looks like Tatooine or something out of Star Wars. So we've kind of come inland away from the Amargosa River itself, and we're following this sort of ridgeline trail. You can see there goes my sister ahead in the distance. But the reason it's called the Ranch View Trail is, well, by gum, you have an amazing view of the whole China Ranch date farm. There's the road you drive in on. You can see very clearly where the fire was stopped or where it started. It was like they had to cut stuff down and create a fire break. Good job, guys. Okay, now we've hiked down from the ridgeline and we're coming into the date palm orchard. The true desert oasis. Especially when you remember that it's surrounded by those baked brown mud hills. Like, this is really pretty exceptional. Look, there's just water bubbling up everywhere here in the middle of this harsh desert. Isn't that wild? Okay, we're coming around the corner to the little gift shop. You can start to see cars parked there in the parking lot. My sister's car is parked in the shade there waiting for us. Great hike. We just checked the stats. It worked out to just under four miles. I will definitely do this hike again. Can't recommend it enough. It's pretty easy initially descending down the canyon, a little, little sketchy, but other than that, it's an easy hike. Goes through some beautiful changing landscapes. And... <laughs>